the Burst Assassin 120 from Thermalright. Is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Now, to have full disclosure, Thermalright did send me over this cooler to take a look at and review. But as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. So if you end up liking the video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Now on to the overview. There are two versions of the Burst Assassin 120. There is the Burst Assassin 120 and the Burst Assassin 120 ARGB. Okay, let's see what you get in the box. There is the heatsink and fan, of course. There is the installation guide. There are two sets of fan clips, a small tube of thermal compound, and the mounting hardware. Taking a closer look at the heatsink, there are six 6mm continuous heat pipes. The cold plate is copper with a nickel plating on it. Moving on to the fan, it is a Thermalrite TLC12C, which is a 4-pin PWM fan. It has 9 blades. It has little rubber pads on all 8 of the corners. And it has a rated max RPM of 1550. The dimensions of this cooler with the fans attached is 154 millimeters high by 124 millimeters wide by 78 millimeters deep. Based off these dimensions, you could have RAM clearance issues with that first RAM slot on micro ATX and ATX motherboards. For socket compatibility, the Burst Assassin 120 is compatible with most mainstream Intel sockets, but it is not compatible with Intel's HPC lineup. For AMD compatibility, it is compatible with AM4, which means it's compatible with AM5, but it's not compatible with Threadripper for obvious reasons, because that IHS is freaking huge. Moving on to how to install the CPU cooler, I will be installing this onto an AM4 motherboard. Now the installation between Intel and AMD is different, so if you are planning on installing this onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. Now as always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will need a PH2 screwdriver, as well as some isopropyl alcohol. Plus, to install this cooler onto AM4, you will need the backplate that your motherboard came with. Start by aligning the holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. Now, with the motherboard flat, place the AMD plastic spacers over each of the standoffs from the backplate. Then find the mounting bar and the AMD mounting screws. Place the mounting screws through the corresponding holes on the mounting bars for your socket. Then align the mounting screws with the plastic spacers. Then screw in the mounting screws into the standoffs on the backplate, making sure the mounting bars face out. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol. Then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now making sure to remove the fan from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the screws on the fastening bar. Now you need to screw in the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once that's done, you can install the fan onto the heatsink and plug in the PWM connector to the motherboard. And that's the installation, nice and simple. So now I'll go over the fan's PWM range. So at 100% PWM range, this motherboard is showing the RPM at 1700-ish, which has a DBA of 36.4. As always, that is taken from 20 inches away on an open air test bench. Then dropping the PWM down to zero, this motherboard is showing the RPM to be at around 385-ish, and this has the RPM at or below my noise floor of 32 DBA. Now before I get to the temperature testing, if you are appreciating all the testing I've done here, then please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. 100% of what I receive goes towards buying things to review. A link is in the description. With that all done, if you haven't watched my CPU cooling testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of how I test the CPU coolers. I'll have a card above and also have it linked down in the description. So the Burst Assassin 120 in the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test had the 
steady state CPU temperature at 72.8 C, which does actually tie the Assassin King 120. Then at full speed, the temperature only went down 0.2 C to 72.6 C. So really no difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests at 87 watts. Now for the 150 watt testing, in the noise equalized 35 dBA testing, the CPU had an average steady state temperature of 79.6 C, which has it just inside the margin of error of the Assassin King 120. So they kind of tie again. Then letting the fan run at full speed had the average CPU steady state temperature drop to 78.8 C. So only a 0.8 Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests, which again means no real difference between these tests. So what do I think of the Burst Assassin 120? It is a good CPU cooler at a competitive price, but I'm starting to feel like a broken record here. The Burst Assassin 120 has the same issue as all the other Thermalrite CPU coolers, and that's that Thermalrite has all these coolers priced very close to one another. The Burst Assassin 120 performed pretty much the same as the Assassin King 120 did, but is a few USD more, at least in North America at time of filming. Again, feeling like a broken record, pricing might be different in your area, so it really comes down to the availability and pricing in your area for which one makes more sense for you. Because this is a good CPU cooler, but can you get another thermal right cooler that performs pretty much the exact same as this one, thermally speaking, but is a couple USD less, you might be able to. Well, to be honest, you most likely will be able to. Now back to talking about only the Burst Assassin 120, I would be perfectly comfortable using this for a 5900X or Intel's equivalent, which would be a, what, 13700 or 13700, oh man, fuck, these names are just getting stupid which for around 30 USD is pretty good. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you have to do is agree to the server roles and then you get to view all of my charts. A link is in the description. There's also Patreon if you would like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. You may want to check out my CPU cooler playlist, maybe. But as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.